Hi, I'm Dr. Caitlin Halbert. Welcome and congratulations on starting this process for weight loss and improving your health. This is the very first step in this process, and today we'll be talking about weight loss surgery and introducing you to our educational seminar. Our team works out of Christiana Care's Wilmington Hospital. We are a center of excellence here, and what that means is that we meet certain standards and requirements as set forth by our larger organizations. We also work closely with commercial insurers, such as Highmark Blue Cross, Cigna, and Aetna, ensuring that we also meet their high degree of standards. So let's get down to it. What is obesity? Obesity is simply put a disease of excessive fat accumulation. But where this really becomes a problem is when a patient becomes about 20% over their ideal body weight. It's easy to calculate your ideal body weight. You can find it on any web search, but it's more important just to know that it really has some significant health impact. Obesity is an epidemic. In Delaware alone, 30% of our population is considered obese, and that puts us at 17th in the nation. So what is morbid obesity other than a terrible sounding terminology? Well, this is what happens when a patient becomes about 100 pounds over their ideal body weight. And what this translates into is a body mass index or BMI of 40 or above. This is a really important number to know. You can easily find this on our calculator that you can find on our website or on any Google search. So what this is telling us is that patients are now at a severely increased risk for other health diseases that we will talk about. This is a very short list of some of the health problems that are attributed to obesity. There are a lot of diseases on this list that you won't be surprised to find, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, but there are some on here that may surprise you. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease may be one of them. This is an increased amount of fat that can be deposited in the liver. It can cause things like liver cirrhosis and liver failure, and it's really a devastating disease that we don't do any screening for routinely. The other thing that you may find on here that's surprising is infertility. I have a lot of women coming to my office with problems conceiving, and this has to do with estrogen that gets stored into fat cells, and it throws off the entire hormonal balance in a woman's body. This can also lead to cancer, such as endometrial or uterine cancer. Uterine cancer is not a disease that we check for routinely, and so it's incredibly important to lower our risk factors by losing weight. Cancer, and all types of cancer, are an increased risk by 10% in obese populations. Uterine cancer alone has an increased risk of 41% in women that are obese. So what do these diseases translate into? Well, it could be early death. The life expectancy in the United States is really starting to level off. And a lot of researchers and physicians feel that this is related to the diseases that are associated with obesity. I had acid reflux high blood pressure, and I was pre-diabetic. I weighed 298 pounds. Sleep apnea, I've had high blood pressure for the last 30 years. It really hit home when I found out I was diabetic. My highest weight that I know of recorded was 300. Even though I felt like I had a pretty standard lifestyle, I knew it was limited to my weight. I had sleep apnea, I had high blood pressure, um, I had aches and pains in my joints. I was really worried about this, the ulcers I had in my esophagus, and coming over to Christiana really made me feel at ease. So what causes morbid obesity? If it was one thing, we'd make a pill for it, and we wouldn't be talking about weight loss surgery. But the problem is that there's multiple things that contribute to morbid obesity. We see morbid obesity and obesity in general in families passed down from generation to generation. So we know there is certainly a genetic component. But what we see more than that is that families share in the way that they cook foods, they grow up learning to prepare foods in a certain way, and they often find comfort in certain foods, all of which may not be the healthiest food choices for us. Also, we live in an environment where we're no longer hunter-gatherers and we're sitting at a desk. And you may have a 15 minute break in the morning, 15 minute break in the afternoon, half hour of lunch, and what are we often doing during those breaks? But eating. And it's really hard to fit lifestyle changes such as exercise into our daily regimen. 